So this is uh, Math 99, Section 7.5. We're doing these, uh, these applications of rational equations. And this is our first example. Uh, the sum of a number and its reciprocal is, is 3, 6. Find the number. So I know I'm going to find, I know I'm going to find the sum. So as I think about the sum, that's, that's addition. So I know that there's going to be addition involved. And let me think about what I'm finding the sum of a number and its reciprocal. So that number, I don't know, I don't know what that number is. So I'll just call it x. And then if I think about the, the reciprocal of something, the reciprocal is the fraction flipped over. So if this is x, its reciprocal would be would be 1 over x. So the sum of a number, which I'm calling x, let me fix that. Let me try and fix that. And it's reciprocal, which is 1 over x. And that sum is equal to 13 sixths. So now I'm going to solve that, uh, multiply both sides by, I'm going to find a common denominator to wipe out those denominators. So it's 6x. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 6x. And uh, if I notice here, if I distribute that in, that becomes a, a 6x squared. Plus, and if I distribute it in here, the x's will cancel, leaving me a 6. Here, the 6's cancel, leaving me a 13 times x. Um, let me keep going from here. This is quadratic, so I'm going to subtract 13x from both sides. And I could go to fact of this, or I could run it through quadratic formula. Um, Whatever, whatever floats your boat for solving these. I notice that this looks like it, that's a negative. This is going to be a 3x minus 2 and a 2x minus 3. It gives me a 6. That gives me a 6. Negative 4, negative 9 is negative 13. So it looks like x is uh, 2 thirds or 3 halves. I get two different things that work. And uh, what I could do is I could, I could test them both and see if they work. So, for example, uh, let me try 2 thirds. A number and it's reciprocal. Oh, that makes sense. Like if the number would work, it's reciprocal would work because they're going to each give me the other ones. Uh, does that in fact equal 13 sixths? Um, well, let me turn these into sixths, multiply that by that, four sixths, multiply that by that version of one, nine sixths. It sure does. Great. So there's my solution. So here's our next example for uh, for this chapter. The numerator of a certain fraction is two more than the denominator. Uh, if one third is added to the fraction, the result is two. Find the fraction. Now these, you know, they're, they're so wordy. There's, there's so much to interpret here. Just take it slowly. Take it, take it one piece at a time. Um, the numerator of a certain fraction, we don't know what this fraction is, but we do know that the numerator is two more than the denominator. So the numerator, you know, that's the top part of the fraction, is two more than the denominator. So for example, if the denominator was five, this would be seven, right? Five plus two, or if this was 15, this would be 17. So we don't, we don't necessarily like know what they are. We don't know what the denominator is, but if we knew it, we would add two to it to get the numerator. So that helps us. Let's say that, let's call that denominator X the numerator is two more than it. So that means the numerator must be x plus two. So there's our certain fraction right there. So that's a, that's a great start. The next piece, if, that hypothetical that mathematicians love to use, if. Uh, so let's just say it is, let's not even just say if. Let's just say a third is added to the fraction. Okay, so I'll add a third to it. So when that happens, the result is two. The result is two. Great, there's my setup. Here's my certain fraction where the numerator is two more than the denominator. One third is added to it and I get two as an answer. So now in order to solve this, I'm going to find a common denominator, multiply both sides by that common denominator to eliminate all my denominators. So if I, uh, I didn't get my color, there we go. So this is going to get distributed into here and here. When I multiply by this one, the x's cancel out. So I have 3 times x plus 2. 
And now when I take that 3x and I multiply it by a third, the threes cancel out. So that leaves me one times x, just an x. And on the right-hand side, that's just a 6x. Great, let me keep working to solve this. Distribute that into there. 3x plus 6 plus x equals 6x. Combine some terms over here. That's a 4x. And uh, subtract 4x from both sides. Still solving. Divide by 2. Looks like x is 3. Now, I found out what x is, but I haven't answered the question yet because the question is find the fraction, my certain fraction. Remember, that was this. So my certain fraction was x plus 2 over x. So if I know it's that x is 3, I'm going to plug that in. So 3 plus 2 over 3, that's 5 thirds. So that should be my answer. Oh, sorry about the bell. Let me check it real quick. 5 thirds plus 1 third is 6 thirds, which is 2. That one works. So here's our next example. Um, a boat travels 9 miles upriver in the same amount of time it takes to travel 11 miles down the same river. Let me kind of keep track of what's going on. So it can travel 9 miles up the river in the same amount of time it takes to go 11 miles down the river. Uh, you know, this makes sense to me because the boat is flowing against a current. And so when it's flowing, when it's going upriver, the current's going to slow it down. And as it's going downriver, the current's going to speed it up, like contribute to its speed. Uh, the current is 2 miles per hour. Oh, good. So it's pushing at 2 miles per hour in that direction. What is the speed of the boat in still water? Okay, so um, what we're going to take advantage of in this problem, in this type of problem, is this relationship between distance, rate, and time. Distance equals rate times time. Dirt uh, is some, what some people use to remember it. Um, and this, is, this is really going to help us a lot. So distance equals rate times time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little, uh, a little dirt chart for this. And I have um, upriver and downriver. So the distance that this boat travels upriver is, is nine miles, nine, mil, nine miles up the river. And the distance down the river is 11 miles. So the distances are nine and 11. Um, the rate, well, I don't know the rate. Uh, that's what I'm trying to find. What is the speed of the boat in still water? I'm gonna let that be my X. Speed of boat in still water. So that means um, when I'm going upriver, I'm going against the current. So that would mean that my, my rate, it would be the rate of the boat minus the current because the current's slowing it down. So the rate would be um, x minus 2 when it's going upriver. And when it's going downriver, the current's pushing the boat, helping speed it up. So it's the speed of the boat plus the current of the river, x plus 2. Um, so I have distance, I have rate. I don't know time. I know the time is the same, so that means I'll be able to set these equal to each other. But I want the time in terms of distance and rate. So if I go back to this distance equals rate times time, um, if I want to know the time, I could divide both sides by rate, and I'll get distance over rate equals time. So that means upriver, my time would be distance divided by rate. Maybe write it in a different color because I don't think I left myself a lot of space. Uh, 9 over x minus 2, distance divided by rate. Distance divided by rate is time. And then uh, my time downriver would be that distance divided by its rate. Great, so I have this, I have this set up, this, this dirt uh, distance equals rate time relationship set up in this table. And now the thing that I'm going to take advantage of is that they happen in the same amount of time. So the time upriver is equal to the time downriver. So the time upriver should be equal to the time downriver. So there's my equation that I'm going to solve. So let me work to solve it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by a common denominator to wipe out that denominator. So I'm going to multiply this side by x minus 2 times x plus 2. Multiply this side by the same thing. Multiply both sides by the same amount. 
the equations are still equal. And notice what happens is on the left-hand side, the x minus 2s divide out to a 1. On the right-hand side, the x plus 2s divide out to a 1. So that leaves me 9 times x plus 2 on the left and 11 times x minus 2 on the right. And I just need to solve this. So uh, let me distribute that in there. 9x plus 18. Let me distribute that into there. 22x minus, oh, I'm sorry, 11x. I don't know where that came from. I'm sorry. I do know where it came from. I was looking ahead to the next part. 11x minus 22. And I will uh, keep working to solve this. I'm going to subtract 9x from both sides. That gives me a 2x. I'm going to add 22 to both sides. That's 30, 40. That gives me 40 divided by 2. X is 20. So the speed of the boat in still water is 20 miles per hour. And if I wasn't confident about that, I could plug it back in and check it. In other words, plug the 20 back into here. 9 over 20 minus 2. That should equal 11 over 20 plus 2. And let's see, uh, 9 18 and 11 20 seconds. Those are both a half. So here's our next um, problem that we're going to take a peek at. Jerry's training for a race is the situation. It looks like a bike race. So she rides her bike 24 miles out on a straight road. So she's going to go 24 miles one way, then turns around and comes back. So it's a round trip. Um, the trip out is against the wind. Sketch that. So she's going out. She's going against the wind. And the trip back is with the wind. So that's... Um, out, it's back. Um, she rides 10 miles per hour faster with the wind, that would be this direction, than she does against the wind. And the whole trip takes two hours. How fast does she go against the wind? That's interesting. I'm looking for her speed against the wind. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let that be my variable. I'm going to let that be my x. And I'm going to make one of these distance rate time uh, charts, maybe help me organize. Um, organize my stuff. So I have against the wind and I have with the wind. And in both of these cases, the distance is 24. It's 24 miles out and 24 miles back. Now the rate against the wind, I decided I don't know it, so I'm going to let that be my, my x. I'm going to let that be that variable x. Um, I do know her distance with the wind, she rides 10 miles per hour faster with the wind. So that should be 10 bigger than this. So that should be x plus 10. So I have a distance, I have rate. Um, let me figure out these, this time then, how much, how much time she went against the wind, how much time she went with the wind. I'm going to connect that back to that dirt formula, distance equals rate times time. And if that's true, I can divide by rate. So I know that distance divided by rate is time. So if I want distance divided by rate, that should give me the time. So if she goes 24 miles at x miles per hour, that's how long... Uh, her trip against the wind should take 24 over x. And same, similar here, di distance divided by rate, 24 divided by x plus 10, which makes sense. This should take less time than that. Um, the whole trip took two hours. So that means if I take this amount of time and add it to that amount of time, that's the whole trip. So the time it takes to go against the wind plus the time it takes to go with the wind should be two hours total. So now I just have that equation to solve. So let's do it. And I go to solve that equation. I'm going to multiply everything by a common denominator to, to kill that denominator, get it out of there. Kill is strong. Remove that denominator. I'm going to multiply by x times x plus 10. That's the common denominator times x x plus 10, and I probably don't need that set of parentheses. All right, so as I do that, I'll keep that, go back to red. I'll do that. Uh, this gets distributed to here. In this case, the x's would, would divide out. So I have 24 times x plus 10 plus, and when I distribute it to this, the x plus 10's cancel out, uh, 24 times x. And that's equal to, notice this is a 2x. So it's 2x times x plus 10. So what I'm going to do is keep solving from here. Distribute that 24 into there. 24x plus.
plus 240 plus 24x. And I'm then going to distribute in this, this 2x. So this would be 2x squared plus 20x. And so then now I notice what I have is a quadratic here. So I'm going to get it equal to 0, maybe try and factor it, do whatever I can. Uh, before I do that, I'll, I can combine some stuff over here. The 24x plus 24x is 48x. And I think that what I'm going to do right now is just give us a little bit of space over here. So I'm going to do away with, with this work. And I rewrite my problem, what I, what I have so far over here, which is uh, 240 plus 48x equals 2x squared plus 20x. So get this equal to 0, maybe try and factor it, something like that. Subtract 48x from both sides. Subtract 240 from both sides. And notice what's I, what I get left with is 0 equals um, 2x squared minus 20 minus 48, negative 28x minus 240. So I can go to solve this. Um, I can try and factor it. I can um, run it through quadratic formula, anything anything that I, that I can do to solve that quadratic. Uh, one thing I do notice is like I could divide everything by 2 to make it a little easier to deal with. So 0 would equal x squared minus 14x minus 120. You don't have to do that. It just makes it easier to try and factor it. Um, and so then if I go to factor this, I'm looking for things that uh, multiply to negative 120 and add to negative uh, 14. And I think that's going to be uh, negative 20 and 6. Or you could run it through quadratic formula. Too. If that gives me x minus 20 times x plus 6, so that would mean um, x equals 20. Oops. X equals 20 or negative 6. And now, what I'm talking about is how fast does she go against the wind. And I think giving her negative speed speed doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to go with 20 miles per hour. That's my answer. And what I could do is try and plug it back into my original equation that I wrote, see if it works. It does. So this is the last problem that we'll do for this section. And it says a water faucet can fill a large tank in 20 hours. So we have some faucet it's dumping in water. And uh, I'm going to assume it's water. Yeah, it's water. Um, dumping in in 20 hours. So 20 hours to fill it. And then there's some, uh, something, some pipe that empties it. And it would drain it in 25 hours. So how long will it take to fill the tank from completely empty if both the faucet and the pipe are open? And you can see that like this is since it only takes 20 hours to fill it, but it takes 25 hours to empty it, it's filling faster than it's emptying. So let's think about these as rates. If it takes 20 hours to fill it, um, in one hour it's like a 20th full. And uh, if it takes 25 hours to, to, uh, to drain it, in one hour it would lose a 25th of it. And what we want to know is how much time it takes to fill it entirely. All right, so there's our, there's our setup for it. So I can just solve that. And uh, the way I'm going to solve it is multiply by common denominator, which is 100. Um, multiply both sides by 100. Oh, 100x. That's my denominator. 20 goes into 100, 25 goes into 100, and I need an x as well. So if I, if I do that here, if I distribute that to that, I notice that this 20 goes into 100 five times, so that would be 5x. If I distribute to here, 25 goes into 100 four times, so that would be 4x. Here the x's cancel, so that would be 100. 5x minus 4x is x, 100. So working together, actually working against each other, it would take 100 hours to get that job all the way done.